Today's date is August 5th, 2011. The time is 6.25 p.m. And the subject is... This is readings from my business law book. From Grand Canyon University. The subject is... Oh, this is the problems and problem cases. This is the end of chapter 15, so let's get through this. I will get through. Okay, problems and problem cases. One, Goldstein, an attorney hired Patterson as a paralegal in her law firm. Goldstein early agreed to pay Patterson an annual salary plus bonus wages, calculated as 10% of Goldstein's attorney's fees from cases on which Patterson worked. At that time, Patterson did not know what the bonus arrangement violated. The know that the bonus arrangement violated the Florida's bar rule, bars rules of professional conduct. When Goldstein failed to pay Patterson more than a portion of the bonus wages due under their agreement, Patterson agreed. Patterson pressed Goldstein for the unpaid bonuses. Goldstein promised that she would pay them, but stated that she could not put that promise into writing because of a problem with the bar. Goldstein thereafter refused to pay Patterson the remaining bonus wages due under their agreement. The employment relationship terminated Patterson sued Goldstein for $87,300 in unpaid wages. Goldstein argued that the agreement was not enforceable against her because her own promise to pay Patterson. The bonus wage was unethical and thus voided, void and thus void as against public policy. Will Goldstein's promise to give Patterson the bonus wages be enforced? 2. Bromer, age 21, was unmarried and 16 or 17 weeks pregnant. She was a high school graduate, earning less than $100 a week and had no medical benefits. Bromer was in considerable turmoil and confusion to father to be insisted that she have an abortion, but her parents advised against it. Bromer went to abortion services with her mother and was escorted into an adjoining room and asked to complete three forms, a consent to treatment form, a questionnaire asking for a detailed medical history, and an agreement to arbitrate. The agreement to arbitrate stated that any dispute arising between the parties as a result of the fees and or services would be settled by binding arbitration, and that any arbitrators appointed by the AAA American Arbitration Association shall be licensed medical doctors who specialize in obstetrics gynecology. No one made any efforts to explain this to Brummer and she was not provided with a copy of the agreement. She completed all three forms in less than five minutes and after Brummer returned the forms to the front desk, she was taken into an examination room where pre-operation procedures were performed. She was then instructed to return at 7 a.m. the next morning. She returned the following day, and a physician performed the abortion. As a result of this procedure, Bromer suffered a punctured uterus, which required medical treatment. Bromer later filed a malpractice lawsuit against abortion services. Abortion services moved to dismiss the suit on the ground that arbitration was required under the agreement. Should the arbitration clause be enforced in this situation? 3. Piotic had served a 10-year term in San Quentin State Prison for assault with a deadly weapon with great bodily injury. His criminal background prevented him from acquiring a license to sell insurance that was acquired by state law. Nevertheless, he sold insurance for American Income Home Life Insurance Company under several false names. He then sued American Income Life Insurance to recover home to recover commissions on sa on the sales that he had made. Will he be successful? 4. Strickland attempted to bribe Judge Sylvania Woods to show leniency towards one of Strickland's friends who had a case pending before the judge. Judge Woods, Im judge Woods immediately reported this to the state's attorney and that was asked to play along with Strickland until the actual payment of money occurred. Strickland gave $2,500 to the judge who promptly turned it over to the state's attorney's office. Strickland was indicted for bribery, pled guilty, and was sentenced to a four-year prison term. Three months after the criminal trial, Strickland filed a notion for the return of his $25. Will the court order the return of his money? 5. Stomatic of Kansas City, Inc. specialized in cleaning and restoring property damage by fire, smoke, water, or other elements. elements. He employed Rhea as a marketing representative. His duties included soliciting customers, preparing costs, estimating, supervising restoration work, and conducting seminars. 
At the time of his employment, Ray has signed a non-competition agreement prohibiting him from entering into a business in competition with Steamatic, Steamatic within six counties of the Kansas City area for a period of two years after the termination of his employment with Steamatic. Late in 1987, Ray had decided to leave Steamatic in contemplation of the move. He secretly extracted the agreement restricting his supposed employment activity from the company's files and destroyed it. Steamatic learned of this and discharged Rhea. Steamatic filed suit against Rhea to enforce the non-competition agreement when it learned that he was entering a competing compet business. Competing business. Will the non-competition agreement be enforced? Six. Dino Testel, Adams, Farley, and Dixon were all employees at the Waffle House restaurant in Grand Bay, Alabama. Seward was a regular customer at the restaurant. On several occasions, Seward would travel to Florida and buy lottery tickets. On his return, he would give the tickets to various friends and family members, including the employees of the Waffle House. A drawing for the Florida lottery was scheduled for Saturday night, March 6, 1999. Seward traveled to Florida in the week before then, drawing and purchased several lottery tickets. He placed each individual ticket in a separate envelope and wrote the name, name of the intended recipient on the outside of the envelope. On the eve of the drawing, Seward presented three of the employers with an employee containing a ticket, but none of them won. The day after the drawing, Seward gave Dickerson and another employee envelopes containing tickets. When Dickerson opened her envelope, she determined that the numbers of her tickets matched the winning numbers drawn in, lottery, in the lottery that night before. The ticket won a prize of approximately $5 million. Shortly afterwards, Dickerson's four com companies Employees sued her, alleging that they and Dickerson had orally contracted with each other that if any uh, one of them should win, the winner would share any lottery winnings with the with the other ticket recipient. An Alabama statute states that all contracts founded in whole or in part on the gambling consideration are void. Must Dickerson share the lottery proceedings with her co-employees? Seven. Kelly Services is a staffing service company that provides a range of employment, staffing, and consulting services. Green, who was 24 years old, began working for Kelly Services six months after graduating from college. At the beginning of her employment, she signed an agreement that contained both non-compete and confidentiality clauses. The non-compete clause stated in part, I will not compete against Kelly or associate myself with any Kelly competitors as an, as an employee, open or owner, partner. These same limitations apply for one year after I leave Kelly in any market area in which I worked or had responsibility during the past five years of my employment with Kelly. She was a staffing supervisor for Kelly Services for more than two years as a staffing supervisor of Green Service and maintained relationships with customers, developed new businesses, and recruited candidates throughout Cumberland and York and York counties in Maine. About 75% of Green's work at Kelly Services involved recruiting activities for Athium, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Un... Unum and Citigroup financial including spending one full year on site at Unum. Green voluntarily resigned from Kelly Services in December 2007, at least in part because of repeated statements about possible layoffs made by a supervisor at Kelly Services. She began working for the Portland Office of Maine Staffing Group as a staffing specialist. Where her duties were primarily clerical, the Portland Office of Maine Staffing recruits blue-collar positions for the construction and trade industries and does not recruit for clients seeking to fill office or clerical positions. In her new job, she did not seek new accounts or customers and did not solicit business involving white-collar personnel. She did not maintain any re Kelly Services documents and has not used any protected information, information from Kelly Services in her new job. Kelly Services filed a motion for a preliminary injunction against Green for violating the non-compete that she signed. Is this non-compete clause likely to be enforced so as to prevent her from working at Maine Staffing? 8. Carlos Leon joined the Family Fitness Center. Signing a contract called the Club Membership Agreement, Retail Installment Contract. The contract is a legal single sheet of paper covered with writing front and back. The front page was divided into two columns with the right hand column containing blanks for insertion of financial and federal truth in lending. Data plus approximately 76 lines of text of vary varying sizes, some highlighted with bold print. The left hand column contains approximately 90 lines of text and differentiated in size, with no highlighting and no paragraph headings or any other indication of its context. The back of the agreement contains approximately 90 lines of text. The exculpatory clause is located at the bottom of the left hand column of the front page and states the following. Buyer is aware that participation in a sport or physical exercise may result in accident or injury and buyer assumes the risk connected with the participation in a sport or exercise and represents that member is, is in good health and suffers from no physical impairment which would limit their use of FFC's facilities. Buyer acknowledges that FFC has not and will not render any medical services including medical diagnosis of members' physical condition. Buyer 
specifically agrees that FFC is officers employees fire in spe specifically agrees that FFC is officers employees and agents shall not be liable for any claim demand cause of action of any kind whatsoever for or on account of death personal injury property damage or loss of any kind resulting from or related to members use of the facilities or part participation in any sport exercise or activity within or without the club premises and buyer agrees to f hold ffc harmless from same months later leon sustained head injuries when a sauna bench on which he was lying collapsed beneath him at family fitness leon filled in action an action against family Fitness for personal injuries. Will the exculpatory agreement be, he signed be enforced? 9. A New York statute states that surrogated parenting agreements, agreement whereby insemination or impregnation is done specifically for the purpose of creating a child for adoption and a surrogate mother. Agrees at the time of insemination or impregnation to surrender the child for adoption are against public policy and void. It's Cove alleges that Dr. Sultan had agreed to perform, it, perform in vitro fertilization on the surrogate mother in order to create a child for its Cove to adopt. Later, she sued Dr. Sultan for breach of contract. Is the contract enforceable? 10. Final question of chapter 15. Gianni Sport was a New York manufacturer and distributor for women's clothing. Gantos was a clothing retailer headquartered in Grand Rapids, Michigan. In 1980, Gantos sales total was 20 times greater than Gianni Sports, and in this country, buyers were in the driver driver's seat. In June 1980, Gantos, Gantos submitted to Gianni Sports a purchase order for women's holiday clothing to, clothing to be delivered on October 10, 1980. The purchase order contained the following clause. Buyer reserves the right to terminate by notice to seller all or any part of this purchase order with respect to goods that have not actually been shipped by seller or as to goods which are not timely delivered for any reason whatsoever. Gianni Sport made this Gianni Sport made the goods in question, especially for Gantos. This holiday order comprised twenty to twenty two percent of Gianni Sport's business. In late September nineteen eighty eight in late September nineteen eighty, before the goods were shipped, Gantos cancelled the order. Was the cancel Clause unconscion unconscionable. Online research examples of non competes and exculpatory agreements. Using your favorite search engine, find an example of a non competition agreement and an example of a liability release. Exculpatory agreement. That is the end of chapter 15. Four more chapters to read for this week.